going to keep it in the purple family here, guys. TCU is next up on our list. We've talked about them. They, they caught lightning in a bottle, right? The Cinderella story was a, a cocaine train until they ran into the Georgia Bulldogs, and that was unfortunate. We don't need to, to re-dissect that, re-litigate that game. But 13-2 uh, and two last season, we didn't even have them making a bowl game last season, so it's safe to say that TCU – overperformed the three tech well, man that's the big 12 for you that's right that's right that, and that's why the chaos in this conference makes it must watch on a week in week out basis the over under last year was six and a half wins so they had vegas fooled as well uh sunny dykes man he's kind of king of fort worth right now was on the cover of dave campbell's texas high school football if you live in the lone star state and you pick that up you know how big of a deal that is was actually uh, the second member of the Dykes family to make it on that cover. His father, Spike, was on the cover about 30 years ago. Um, so this year's edition pays homage to that as well. Kendall Bryles comes down to be the new offensive coordinator now that Garrett Riley is out at Clemson. Shout out to the family for making that graphic on the private plane. That was interesting. Uh, gentlemen, the, the team strength for this Horn Frog team is going to be the skill position players. Uh, when you look at the transfer portal, what they were able to do they brought in a host of talent, mostly from a little further east in Alabama. Uh, they also brought in a really fun wide receiver in John Paul Richardson from Oklahoma State. But the running back wide receiver rooms are taken care of. If there's a weakness on this team, I think it's going to be interior offensive line. They lose three starters, including Steve Avila. They're all Big 12 center. Replacing the interior of that offensive line is going to be important for Chandler Morris, who finally gets his chance at quarterback this year. Chandler was a starter last year, won the job over Max Duggan, and then got hurt in that game against Colorado. And, well, the rest is history. Duggan goes on to be uh, a Heisman finalist and, and take TCU somewhere where they had never been before. So the question is with Chandler, is he the guy? He finally gets his shot. Can he live up to that expectation on a very, very talented team? Talked about the running back and wide receiver rooms. You start with Trey Anderson or Trey Sanders, excuse me, who's an Alabama transfer. Monty Bailey is also back. He was on the team last year and, and took over when uh, Keandre Miller went down with an injury. All he did was run for 8.1 yards of carry. So I think Bailey's going to be a really solid option for the Frogs. Wide receiver room is, if not for Texas, probably the most loaded wide receiver room in the conference. They've got Savian Williams, who's the Quentin Johnson replacement, big physical receiver is going to stretch the field. You've got JoJo Earl, local kid from Alito, who comes back from Alabama. And then I mentioned John Paul Richardson comes over from Oklahoma State. All three of those guys have the potential to lead this team in receptions, in touchdowns, in total yardage. They're that good. On the defensive side, it's a pretty balanced defense that's coming back. Now, they did lose a couple of really pivotal pieces, right? Uh, Hodges Tomlinson, number one cornerback for them a season ago. He's gone. D. Winters, their captain, middle linebacker, he's gone. So how do they replace him? Well, Josh Newton takes over in the secondary. He's going to be your most impressive cornerback to watch this season, a guy who's really high on most NFL draft radars. Um, you've got Johnny Hodges, who played really well last year. He's got to step up to reach that D. Winters level uh, of play at the linebacker spot. And then you've got Dominic Williams, on the defensive line, played 611 snaps. Woo. Defensive tackle, true freshman season, by the way. So the kid was on the field quite a bit. Um, their schedule, guys, very workable. Very, very workable. My When I sat down to write this preview, initially I thought there's no way that they get anywhere close to doing what they did last year. And then you look at the schedule, and if TCU can get some momentum going, they're going to run right through this. I've got them at 10-2. and two. I think they beat Colorado in a pivotal opening game. They go to Houston. They have a big game against SMU coming up week four. Don't sleep on the ponies. Uh, but other than that, they get West Virginia, Iowa State, BYU in consecutive weeks before they play Kansas State. That's right before the bye week. And then after the bye, they've just got four games. Texas Tech, Texas, Baylor, and TCU. Now, for me... Those last four games are going to be crucial because you hope TCU goes into the bye healthy. Maybe they go in with a loss against Kansas State that's on the road. 
if they can hold serve and hold their own in those final four games, I think double digit wins are absolutely on the calendar for TCU this year. The problem is Texas uh, and, and Oklahoma and then Texas Tech, they're all going to want their shots, right? That Texas Tech game is after the bye for both teams, and it's on a Thursday night in crazy Lubbock. I mean, you, you could see TCU going 10-2. and two. You could see them going 7-5, and five, just depending on where you break out the schedule. Yeah, and I see them going 10-2. and two. Personally, I have them uh, pretty much winning until Kansas State. Obviously, at Kansas State, it's going to be a tough one. I just talked about what I think Kansas State can do. Um, and then I do think that they'll probably lose that matchup with Texas Tech uh, right out of the bye. Like you are saying, Mitch, it's, it's, it's both out of the bye for both of them. It's a Thursday night in Lubbock. And, you know, I know that the students might have to go to bed, you know, so they can get up for their Friday classes. But um, that's probably not <laughs> happening with how heated this little rivalry has become in the last couple of years. Uh, look, you know, for me, TCU, they're they're a really good football team. And, you know, year one with Sonny Dykes, they went to the playoff. They went to the national championship game. Um, and I obviously got embarrassed when they got there. But that's not a small feat. That's something that most teams would call their best season ever. And so, you know, for TCU, that's, that's a fantastic campaign. Are they going to be able to do that again this year? I think most people would tell you no. Um, but that's probably not what they're saying inside the locker room in Fort Worth. You know, Chandler Morris – Really, really good quarterback. I still think we're in a little bit of wait and see because we haven't seen what he can do really. But, man, he's going to have the talent around him. And while some teams, you look at what they lost and they're just replacing it from inside the roster and recruiting and whatever else, I think a lot of these position groups and the skill positions can get better year over year just based on what they're able to add in the transfer portal. Trey Sanders from Alabama, very good running back. Uh, Jojo Earl as well. John Paul Richardson might be the underrated name in that room. I think that he's going to be really, really good. Oklahoma State is going to be missing him uh, out wide. And so, you know, I think when you look at what this team can do offensively, I think they can keep it right up. And I know everyone's going to say, yeah, they lost Garrett Riley. And I agree with you. That's a massive loss. But let's not pretend like Kendall Bryles isn't a great offensive mind who can keep some of this going. Sonny Dykes as well, really good offensive mind. So I, I think these guys can – kind of keep it up keep things running in the right direction um maybe there's a little bit of a step down maybe there's a little bit of a you know a, a slow roll but when you look at what they have on the schedule they got plenty of time to break that in um i don't really see a tough game for them until probably kansas state um smu i think will give them a lot of a lot of problems just in terms of what they can do on offense but i, I smu does not have a defense they're still waiting to put the d back in dallas um and and uh, again, I think we're just waiting to see, uh, you know, what they'll do until Kansas State. I think they got kind of – I don't want to say cakewalk necessarily, but if they do what they need to do, they will be able to break in their offense before that tough stretch towards the end of their schedule, which, yeah, that's tough. But I, I think they'll get the chance to do that. I think things will be, you know, back on the winning ways for TCU. But 10-2 and two ultimately for me has them coming in third in the conference. They just lose to the wrong people in conference, and that's kind of wraps for the Horn Frogs. The close is brutal. The, no home game for a month uh, from between October 14th and November 12th. Um, that, that's brutal. Um, at Tech, uh, Texas, Oklahoma, Baylor to close our Baylor, Oklahoma to close it out. Baylor's a big rivalry game, even if they're not as talented on paper as some of those other teams. It's a big rivalry game. Guys, is there any concern? For me, the biggest one about TCU is it's just a completely different core on both sides of the ball. Right. And it just felt like they had a magical run last year. And that new core is going to be talented. But that mind meld that Garrett Riley had with Max Duggan that then translated to Kendra Miller and Quentin Johnson and the other receivers that they had that had gone on to the NFL. That was just special week in and week out. And that by the end of the year, you just had no doubt that they were going to get the yards they needed. They were going to score on the drive that they needed to, you know, punch it in to go up or they were going to kick the field goal with one second remaining in Baylor, right? There's just not a lot of doubt by the end of that year. Are you guys concerned that that could be just a magical one-off year? And with all these new faces, especially on the offensive side of the ball, that that magic could struggle to come back, even if they are talented in the positions that they are coaching and on the field. It, yeah, it absolutely could. I mean, gosh, the the second act is often harder than the first, right? To, to show up and do it again different quarterback, different 
you know, engines to drive that offense. I mentioned the offensive line is not intact. They lose their three interior guys. So, yeah, it's going to be an absolute struggle. I, I do think – I think TCU has a, a good chance to do something special the first half of the season. I mean, you know, the way I look at it, if they go 9-3 and three, – they're either, either losing to Kansas State, so going 8-1 and one into the bye week and then dropping two games after, or they beat Kansas State on the road in kind of a war of attrition and then drop three of the next four. And I think losing to Tech, losing to Texas, losing to Oklahoma, all absolutely on the cards. Um, th- this is, I think this is the most brutal close of any team in the Big 12. And, uh, yeah, if, if Chandler Morris, you know, struggles, if that offense can't produce like it did a season ago, they're going to drop some games late. Yeah, and I think that there's reasons to be concerned about it. I want to pull up some of the stats that we have for them. If you look at the returning production, that's really where your concern is. Uh, only bringing back 52% overall um, and losing just some. I mean, you're 130th in offensive returning. So somebody out there is worse than you. I don't know who off the top of my head, but it's only one. Um, in terms of who's bringing back less on offense. Um, But if you look at the offensive ranks, nothing about that was necessarily, like, outstanding. There were some really good numbers, but nothing about those were, you know, I don't see any, like, twos and threes and fours up there in terms of just being exceptionally good in one category. But what you look at is you do see that in scoring, they came in ninth, right? So despite maybe not massive numbers anywhere else, you see that they still scored points and they were able to do it somewhat consistently uh, on a fairly regular basis. So what I think is probably most likely is that when you get to that last part of the schedule we've been talking about, there's a really good chance that a lot of these guys have been able to build that connection. Again, I think it's a slow rollout. So you're going to have a chance for all these pieces to start to fit together, to let them start to win some games, get a little bit of confidence in them, get a little bit of that swagger back in the locker room, you know, and, and, when you can do that, then I don't know, right? At that point, it's really, is Sonny Dykes just the guy? Is he about to be one of the best coaches in college football and TCU is going to be a perennial contender? Or was that, yeah, was that just a little bit magical and now we're going to do a little bit of backsliding? And yeah, they'll still be good, but maybe not compete at that level ever again. I think that's really the big question. If you're making me pick, I think they can do it again. I just think that there's so much else in the Big 12 this year that they're going to have trouble actually doing it on the field. On paper, they've got it for me. It's, it's really just when they get onto the field and they play and they, they have to line up against all of Texas and Tech and Oklahoma and Kansas State. I just don't see how you don't drop two of those games. Yeah, it's a tough draw schedule-wise. And guys, the last thing I'll say is they went 9-1 and one last year in games decided by 10 points or fewer nine and one that that's really hard to replicate. I think they're going to have a good season. I, I don't know that the magic is going to be back. I think I have them in the eight and four, nine and three range this year, beating the Vegas over under, but magical might not be what you described this season for the Horn Frogs. I think it's going to come down. If, if they're going to win double digit games for me, I wrote in our preview, it's going to come down to if they can beat Oklahoma in Norman. Um, I think nine and three would be a great second season for Sonny Dykes. Yeah, I don't think absolutely. a lot of I don't think a lot of people can realistically complain about nine and three um, given this schedule. But if they could punch Oklahoma in the mouth uh, in that final Big Twelve game, boy, that would be that would be bragging rights forever. And uh, I think TCU <laughs> could could potentially pull it off. Gracious, how about that?